Hi, this is a um, recording of a presentation I did at the Boar Anniversary Symposium in London, Coventry University. Um, illustrates using Boar in um, EAP research and practice, um, in particular research into Lexis, lexical development, in particular, in particular of the productive variety, um, the vocabulary you actually use when you when you write. Um, why? Why investigate that? Um, working in a, a language centre in, in a university, you do see that a language takes less and less of a priority. Um, in some ways, for good reasons. Um, you know, knowing the university's culture, um, knowing a range of study skills, these are all important. Um, you know, getting into very specific forms of genre. But even so, um, for lower level students, you wonder um, if there's sort of a threshold of language they ought to know before they specialise and just forget about language. So that's one of the things that motivated this. Um, the role of the, the corpus, the Bohr corpus and the Michigan corpus is basically to identify a level that is a target level, a valid level for students to head towards. So often things like the academic word list um, and other tools are derived from professional level writing um, research articles and so on that is actually is appropriate for awl but isn't appropriate for all things so when you look at for example productive vocabulary um, it might be I, I thought it was worth using accomplished student writing which the ball corpus and my class represent so because i was testing foundation students that's the, the year before undergraduate i thought well what would be the next step for them you know what's their target sort of competence and I thought first year um, undergraduate first year undergraduate writing effectively um, rather than the professional level so basically what I did was I looked at um, a number of essays from the Bohr corpus and the number of essays from the Minecusp corpus I standardized them all to a thousand words and um, I used um, word lists the new general service list um, from Brown and Culligan um, at all in order to identify um, w w when you look at the writing in there the thousand words um, how many of those word types are not common and not common is defined as beyond the most common 2,000 word families in those word lists in the new general service list so common word types um, be things like place um, forget um, you know have very very common they are and anything less frequent anything um, going into the academic type language or even technical language or even just less frequent I counted that as beyond 2000 so I, I looked at the proportion that was in the the accomplished student writing the first years who were getting good grades for their essays and I thought well on our foundation on our foundation year um, let me take some writers who are currently writing at IELTS 5.5, 15 of those. Their, their average IELTS score was six approximately. And uh, take an essay at the beginning of the year and measure the same proportion, the same B2000 proportion at the beginning of the year and then measure it again at the end of the year. How much, effectively, how much rarer vocabulary is appearing in their essays. And the same for a higher level group, IELTS seven writers, 15 of those, their IELTS overall score was 7.5 approximately. How much B2000 vocabulary is there at the beginning of the year? And how much is the end? In other words, how close do they get to that benchmark? Do they get into that threshold? Um, this is with uh, like an hour's vocabulary and discourse, tuition, lots and lots of texts for native speakers, subject specialism modules. Um, I would say a program that prioritizes study skills over language and also um, is targeted with at lots of authentic texts, um, you know, rather than very graded language. So I had 15 essays from Bohr, 15 essays from Michigan that roughly reflected um, the argument, argument genre of essays. Um, they were all first year essays. They all had a merit or distinction. Um, they were all standardized to a thousand words because when you measure word types text length is a problem 
So what I basically found was um, when you look at the Michigan 15 essays and the Bohr 15 essays, they're, they're quite a similar average number of word types um, of the most frequent kind here that's listed as F2000 and quite a similar proportion of the less frequent kind, the beyond 2000. Um, when you put those two together to create what I've called here the combined benchmark, what you get is roughly 70% of those word types are among the most common 2000 word families in English. Um, and roughly 25% are the less common, the beyond 2000. Um, if you look at the distribution of those and the, the, the essays, the word types were normally distribu distributed. Um, if you go from the mean to one standard deviation to the left, um, you basically get a range between 20% and 25%. The reason for this was, well, if some writers are getting merits and distinctions and their essays only have 20% um, less frequent vocabulary, there's no point really setting it at the mean. It could be more or less anywhere within that range. I just cut off the outliers, the people in the tail on the left here. I thought, well, that doesn't feel so safe. So we'll have it from the mean to one standard deviation and above, and we'll call that a benchmark. So the entry point of the benchmark is like 20% word types, effectively. Um, so the results, um, the paler column is the, the lower group, IELTS 5.5. The darker column is um, IELTS 7. And um, you know, what we found was at the beginning of the year, um, there wasn't that much difference. It was about just under 2%, like um, 16 and a half, 18 and a half, something like that, of word types in their essays were beyond 2000. Um, but by the end of the year, there was actually a bigger difference. Um, the group mean and almost all the students had gotten beyond the benchmark, you know, right into the, you know, the heartland of the benchmark, but um, the IELTS 5.5 students had not. But not only that, the, num the increase of word types beyond 2000 was much less for the lower group than for the higher group. There may be a number of reasons for this. Um, if you do um, a t-test, um, paired samples t-test, um, the difference between word types in the first and second essay for the higher group is statistically significant, but it isn't for the lower group. It's as if, if it were a medical experiment, the intervention, you couldn't really say if the difference was, you know, due to the intervention or not, um, with much likelihood. It was P16 or something, so it's well, well above the, uh, 0.16 rather, well above the um, standard threshold, which is 0 0.05, not 0 0.05 rather. Yeah, just reflecting that, yeah. Okay, so, you know, there were some other signs of progress in the, the IELTS 5.5 group. They had increased the number of word types used in the more frequent side of the language, the most frequent 2000. The overall variety of word types and the total number of unique words they had used had increased as well. It's just that they were the more common words. They were using affixation more um, and there were some B2000 increases. Um, but you add them together and you get something that does not equal still the, the increase that was evident in the higher group. Um, so it set me thinking, you know, was this possibly interference in the curriculum, uh, a burden of language that was too heavy on them? Um, you know, the language burden, the fight for fighting your way out of texts that are too hard for you, which has certainly been shown to be in the literature to be not ideal in terms of vocabulary acquisition. In a way, these texts appear to me to be targeted at at least the middle, a higher level of the programme and don't really fit the bottom third very well. So in response to this, um, I went back to the Bohr corpus, um, feeling that this borderland between um, around about the 2000 word level, but before the 2000 word level and after, seemed to be a quite a rich area of place for lexical development. Rather than go to the standardised word lists that are available, I went to Bohr, and this is um, 6.7 million, I think it is, words of student writing. Um, so just asking myself what common words, what words are commonly appearing in their essays. And um, I went to, in terms of the unique words, around about the 2000 word level. I just took a whack of them, about 600 of them, 
um, I fed them back into other analysis to remove the most common words from the language according to other criteria and then put them in Tom Cobb's website to create word families. And this became a, a, a series of lessons to develop productive vocabulary based on the word family model, based on words that are commonly appearing in students' essays, and based on the idea that increasing the range of forms in the word family is something that both students need to do. This is obviously what students appeared to be doing, the lower level students. So I just wanted to, di to directly kind of enable that process. Um, the worksheet on the right shows um, sort of questions with, you know, one of the more common forms of the word family and then lots of options within the word family and then you have to respond to the prompt. Um, so that's basically it. Um, and um, the full, I'll post a link to the full paper um, at the bottom. Um, and the full paper's got all the references. I haven't put any of them, them in here. But feel free to contact me, especially if you've got an interest in vocabulary, um, a word list and so on. So thank you for listening to that.